I am in Mesa Verde National Park, Colorado at the Farview sites. In this video, we're going to take a look at a series of non-cliff dwelling Pueblo ruins. Now this is not the major draw here at Mesa Verde, in fact it's largely glossed over, but Farview is actually a very extensive set of historic ruins that deserves attention. If you're interested in seeing the cliff dwellings and other features of the park, then check out my other video on those. So, this here is the center of the Farview community, which was started around 800 CE. Farview was one of the most densely populated regions of Mesa Verde. In the mid 1100s, there may have been at least 35 villages within a half square mile of here. The Farview House is the largest of the sites and was the center of town. It was built around the year 1000, a thousand years ago. Here's an old elevation marker. Farview is at 7,689 feet. Farview was an ancestral Pueblo and farming community, and many of the families lived in Pueblos and houses around the Great House. And we'll see some of those. From 800 to 1300, they built the houses and Pueblos to live in and farm the deep mesa top soil. This building, before centuries of abandonment and deterioration, had at least 40 rooms on the ground floor and about 30 rooms on the second floor. This is what is known as a great house. The Pueblo and great houses were massive buildings with large rooms and several kivas. Unlike residential Pueblos or cliff dwellings as they evolved into later, people did not add individual rooms for living onto the structure. This whole thing was most likely planned out. These ruins are centuries older than the cliff dwellings down in the canyons, which is pretty incredible. You can imagine on a cloudy summer day just like this in 1050, this community would have been filled with the sounds of everyday life. People working and conversing, children laughing and playing, and dogs barking. There also would have been a distinct smell of juniper smoke and maybe some peyote in the kivas. There's also some nice views from Farview House. Directly across from Farview House is the Pipe Shrine House, which would have been constructed around the same time in 1000. The ancient farmers who lived here at Farview were like other farmers in the Four Corners region. They would settle and farm wherever dry land agriculture was possible. Though significant distance separated the farmers, they were connected through trade as well as a common lifestyle and method of farming. Like the region's farmers today, the Puebloans did not use irrigation techniques. They would just plant crops that were relatively adapted to dry climate in the soil. They plant seed in the spring when the soil is damp from the snow melt. Then they waited for summer rains to provide all the moisture needed for the crops to grow. But that rain didn't always come, sometimes not for several years. Pipe Shrine House was named by Smithsonian archaeologist Dr. Jesse Fuchs because he found a dozen decorated tobacco pipes at this house, especially in the kivas like this one. A short walk away from the center of the Farview community is Coyote Village. Like the rest of these sites, Coyote Village was constructed 200 years before the famous cliff dwellings nearby. This village was started in the year 975, and it went through several phases of abandonment and reoccupation over centuries. Each time the people returned, they reused some of the old stone and timber to remodel and add to the village and rooms their ancestors had built. Coyote Village, or Coyote Village, had five kivas used for political meetings and religious ceremonies. That 
that's a ventilation shaft for the Kiva. Notice the keyhole shape of this kiva. The keyhole kivas are pretty unique to Mesa Verde. That may indicate a local style that the people here preferred around the 1200s since no one else in the region was really doing it. This was a tower, perhaps used for defensive purposes. The tower was connected with the kiva by an underground tunnel. That's pretty cool. There's another keyhole kiva at the Far View Tower. This was the site of a small farming pueblo with a tower at the center. This tower was once two stories high, built around 1200. The soils are relatively deep and fertile around this pueblo, but the people still built hundreds of check dams around here to catch and retain moisture and soil over time. They also made small terraced fields in this area, so the tower may have had a nice aerial view of the terraced farm 750 years ago. Another short walk away is a fascinating piece of history. This is the Far View Reservoir, which is now just a giant masonry circle. This impressive and huge circular structure was built in two phases beginning around 900. It's about 90 feet in diameter and has some constructed embankments, steps, and ramps, so a lot of time and energy was invested by the local farmers to build this. Archaeologists are still not 100% sure of its purpose, but it was likely a community project to collect water. There is now research and evidence to prove that the reservoir did collect water, Sometimes, water pooled into the central low spot of the reservoir, and pottery shards discovered at this site were mostly water storage jugs. It's so unique that the Mesa Verde reservoirs are designated as a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. So this is pretty interesting and important, a testament to the industrious ancestral Puebloan people's innovation with simple technology. The last Farview site is inside of a shelter to protect it from the elements. This is the Megalithic House, a small collection of rooms that was likely the home to one extended family. It is known as a unit pueblo, and represents what a typical family home looked like in the late 1100s, or rather shows the foundations of it. They even had their own kiva. So Farview isn't the cliff palace or balcony house, but it's severely underrated. It's a really awesome cluster of Pueblo and sites, but there's one more a few miles away that I want to see. All by its lonesome is the rarely visited Cedar Tree Tower. Towers like these were scattered around Mesa Verde, as we saw the remains of some at Farview, and there's some even closer to the cliff dwellings. The towers were built between 1100 and 1300, but one thing I noticed is that they always seem to be next to a kiva. The purpose of the tower kiva complex is not known. The tower may have shared a ceremonial purpose with the kiva, or it was just purely defense and for messaging as part of the Puebloan communication system. Not much is known about this specific tower, but it is well preserved compared to most. So the Farview sites are very underrated here at Mesa Verde National Park. Of course the main draws are the amazing cliff dwellings, but these are still worthwhile stops and interesting pieces of history. Please like, subscribe, and check out my other videos on national parks, Pueblo and history, and much much more, including the video I filmed on the rest of Mesa Verde, and thanks for watching.